All right, everyone, it is time for our annual PlayStation predictions video. This is the fifth or sixth year that we've actually done this. And like those other times, I'm going to grade my predictions from last year, see how well I did. And more importantly, uh, I'm going to deliver 10 new predictions for 2022, which should be a very exciting year when it comes to PlayStation hardware and software. So let's get started. All right, let's see just how well I did here or bad. Um, first timestamp right there if you want to jump to the 2022 predictions but otherwise let's begin with our sales forecast so in terms of a lifetime total uh, by the end of last year i said ps4 would be at 119 million ps5 20 million and psvr 6.2 million now grading this is always kind of a pain because we do these videos so soon into the next year that we don't have sony's financial results from uh, the last quarter so we have to go off the third quarter and kind of do some guesswork which the fourth quarter always has you know a higher sales volume because it's the holidays but for ps4 the result from the third quarter was 116.6 million um which it's not going to get close to 119 because ps4 sales have declined rapidly more than i thought because when i said 119 even that was accounting for like a year over year decline but yeah ps4 is completely or, or practically done so it's like 200,000 units a quarter and it's only going to get worse so at 116.6 it's probably at like 116.8 maybe 0.9 but like not not close uh ps5 however this is more complicated because again uh the third quarter the the third quarter it was confirmed at 13 something million uh vg charts has it at 16.68 right now and that's still not going to be you know completely accurate it's probably closer to like 18 or something i'm guessing because when I said 20, that was uh, the thought process there was like, they're gonna make a little bit more than PS4. The demand is clearly higher than PS4, but it's really a matter of how many they, they're able to make. And well, at least for Sony's forecast, it seems like I would have been close if they did make enough of them, but they didn't. Or at least I'm, I'm almost sure they didn't. So I'm guessing that by the time we have that uh, financial report, it's gonna be quite under 20 million, probably, probably like closer to 18 or something, but yeah that was unfortunate and psvr we gotta drop this one off because the last confirmed number was 5 million in 2020 or 2019 i forget when exactly but um yeah they were only doing 1 million milestones um we never got one for for six which i would think it's probably at six by now but they're not gonna bother even putting that number out there because it's not really seen as a an impressive number to begin with so we're gonna drop uh, uh we're gonna drop off psvr for now uh so for number two i said a uh our number two prediction was ps5 upgrades coming alongside other projects so as an example like god of war or the last was part two um this was partly correct because i think the case i was making uh last year was that it would be mostly native upgrades which we got some of that right when it comes to native ps5 games we actually got you know uh death stranding director's cut ghost of Tsushima director's cut um third party you had ff7 remake integrate but um, you know, a handful of that, uh, Uncharted, the Legacy Collection, which is coming next year, but we had some of that, and mostly we saw patches for PS4 games. So, uh, things like Last of Us Part Two, God of War, Days Gone, Ratchet and Clank, you know, these all had patches where they're principally, or they're exactly still like PS4 games, uh, but their frame rates are higher on PS5, which is certainly welcomed, at least, uh, to some degree, uh, upgrades for those late life cycle PS4 games, it was kind of expected, so that was partly true. Number three, I said a services shakeup. PS Now would include online play and or PS Now with Plus offered because let's face it, uh, we all knew that eventually they were going to have to consolidate services or revamp them or change them, add value. We've been you know talking about that for so long. That's finally coming, it looks like, but um, that didn't happen last year. We'll talk about that in the predictions portion. Number four, I said new DualSense and PS5 play colors, stock severely limited. So the case I made here was like, yeah, we're going to see more DualSense colors expected. That was right. Uh, PS5 play colors. Uh, the timeline was a bit off because those are coming next year. And I'm not sure in terms of, you know, how stock is going to look for those plates, but I'm guessing it'll probably be fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess this was uh, for the most part okay. I mean, last year I said that uh, the plates would probably be a, a high price, like $70 to, to $100. Turns out it was actually a little bit less than that, like 55 bucks, which is still kind of a lot for, again, two pieces of plastic. Uh, but number five, I said, <clears throat> excuse me, a soft reveal for the next generation PlayStation VR. So yeah, this was partly correct as well, or I, I guess mostly correct, because um, with PSVR, what we 
got was a blog post just saying, hey, it's coming, here's a little bit of info, but otherwise we wouldn't really get much beyond that. So I'm surprised that we got a second blog post showing us the controllers, but that was still pretty light on info as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that was uh, for the most part correct based on not having a, a proper consumer facing reveal which I expect that next year. We'll talk about that soon in a bit. Uh, number six, I said Sony acquires Bluepoint Games. Correct. I think we all were thinking that's going to happen eventually. Number seven, State of Play reveals uh, Guerrilla Games' second project, a new IP FPS. Uh, Bed Studio reveals Days Gone 2. Um, so, uh, no, <laughs> both wrong. Uh, at some point, Guerrilla Games has to show off the second project. Um, and the Ben Studio thing, we learned about exactly what happened there. In fact, uh, this goes into number eight where I said Sony's secret San Diego team is still a secret, as in we won't find out what went on with that, what's going on with that project. Well, that's also wrong because we did find out exactly what happened. And it, that went into number seven where um, Ben Studio was... Um, tasked with working on an uncharted game of some kind for maybe a short period of time until they said can we be taken off for this um they pitched days gone to that was denied um the secret san diego project was the small team at the visual arts service group that was working on a uncharted one remake and then they wanted to well they decided that would, that game would take up it would be too difficult to you know remake uncharted from the ground up because it was a little bit too outdated then they started doing the last of us then it was handed off to naughty dog that game is still apparently still in development so we learned about all that stuff uh both those predictions were completely incorrect uh number nine i said silent hill is real <laughs> more third party exclusives coming to bolster 2022 uh so this was mostly wrong as well silent hill is not real yet i still think it's coming i'm not going to predict it for this coming year but because I think the timeline is uh, off based on these rumors. It's something's happening. I know people are so sick of hearing about it, but um, not. It was still wrong for now. Um, and third-party exclusives coming to bolster 2022. Um, the case there being made was that Sony was still going to be pretty aggressive with uh, aggressive with third-party deals. And I guess the one thing that we the, the thing I can think of immediately was the older public remake, because that is uh, going to debut first console exclusive on PlayStation. Um, I don't think that game's coming in 2022, though. <laughs> it's pretty far away, actually. Um, so probably not releasing this year. Uh, but still, I guess that's one angle of it where it's, where it's like, yeah, there's more third party stuff. Uh, and then number 10, I said iterative system software updates. No more big headline updates, which this was also wrong, actually, because we had two fairly substantial updates on PS5 that had a lot of features and a huge change log. Uh, but it's weird, right? Because now Sony has to say, here's a big update coming. It doesn't really roll off the tongue to say 21.0.3.4, right? Like, because that's PS5's uh, numbering scheme now for, you know, its system software. But otherwise, yeah, this was actually wrong. They're still going to be rolling out, you know, pretty large updates every, you know, one or two quarters. But now let's start with our 2022 predictions and beginning with sales. PS4, let's say 117.3 million because that's going to be very, <laughs> it's pretty much done, right? Uh, a huge decline. That's like, you know, barely 150,000 every quarter. It wouldn't surprise me if PS4 manufacturing uh, would cease this year or if it's already ceased because it's actually quite difficult now to find one in stores or even online at MSRP. Um, most manufacturing efforts, granted they're not in direct conflict, but Sony's, you know, trying as hard as they can to make more PS5s uh, versus something like PS4. So, um, yeah, I, it's got to be done relatively soon, which would be a, a change for Sony because they support and manufacture the, the outgoing system for at least, you know, two years at a minimum, but like really upwards of three or four years. And yeah, right now we're in a marketplace where people um, just buy the, the newest thing much sooner than they did, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, for PS5, let's say 36 million, because keep in mind that still this year is gonna be tough when it comes to manufacturing. Unfortunately, yeah, the chip shortage is going to go throughout the uh, entirety of this year in all likelihood. It won't be until next year where um, demand should be met for most of these uh, for all sectors that are using uh, chip manufacturing so this is going to be no different uh, when i combine it with because 36 million would be around what ps4 did actually in the same time frame so i guess the point i'm trying to make is that rate of sale should still be relatively close to ps4 
Uh, demand is higher than PS4 still from the looks of it, so if they could make more, I'm sure it could easily outsell PS4, but I'm gonna guess it's still gonna do about what PS4 was doing within that time frame. And that's also, you know, maybe keeping in mind that chip manufacturing should start to improve a bit in the back half of this year. So in theory, it should still keep up with rate of sale on PS4, and that's about where it would be if it sold 36 million. Uh, number two, the revamped PlayStation Plus. So here's what I think. Lots of PS1, some PS2 and PSP games. PS3 will be streamed. Uh, PS4, PS5 catalog is like an expanded PS Plus collection and game trials are for recent games. So let's really break this down. This is kind of what I talked about in the um, video we did when the Bloomberg report actually came out, but I suspect that uh, there's gonna be a, a good amount of PS1 games. There, there should be. Um, that should be fairly straightforward and easy, assuming that they're not, you know, doing something crazy like trophy support, which if they do, that's going to dramatically slow down the amount of titles they can reasonably get on the service. Um, I'm going to guess this is going to look like the program on PS3 back in the day, if you remember the PS1 and PS2 classics, uh, during that time where there's like hundreds of them. Like that's the most ideal scenario. Like I like trophies, but let's not do those to, so we can get a good library out there. Um, and so... Lots of PS1, some PS2 and PSP games. I suspect that might be a little bit underwhelming. PS3, we're not going to argue this. They're going to be streamed. Um, if Here's the thing, and I'll humor you. If Sony you know, actually went through with emulating PlayStation 3 software, it's going to be a highly curated, very small and disappointing library. In fact, I would also throw in as a an added prediction that I think the service is going to be seen as or at least initially disappointing to money because it's just going to be compared to Game Pass right away. You're not going to get day-to-day -day games. Um, the retro legacy games, they're not going to please everybody, whether it's pricing, the amount of titles that are available, or if they're locked behind a paywall, so you have to subscribe and you can't buy them individually. I'm telling you something about the service. People are not going to be thrilled. Uh, but game trials uh, for recent games, because actually right now, that's part of... Um, they're testing that right now with like three games. I don't even know if they're still available, but um, that might be Sony's, you know, way of pleasing people, I guess, uh, when it comes to day and date, they might offer, you know, extended game trials of like five to 10 hours for, you know, high profile first party software day one, or, you know, high profile third party games, um, which could be kind of a win-win for Sony and whatever publishers involved, because people will play the game and they want to, you know, end up buying it after they run out of time or something. Um, and also the PS4 and PS5 catalog is like an expanded PS Plus, uh, PS Plus collection. I would suspect it's kind of like that, right? We've got 200 something PS4 games on PS Now right now. Um, if the rumor is to be believed where they're gonna drop the PS Now branding, then that means you've got 200 something you know, PS4 games that are just gonna be, um, I guess, rolled over into what this new service is. And PS5 will be the same thing. You know, a, a smaller library of you know curated games that are, um, or what should be high quality curated games. And I would, I would suspect that's gonna be that second tier of the service. Uh, but going into our number three prediction, next gen PSVR formal reveal around GDC time or right before GDC, consumer focused to showcase uh, hardware and software and it will support PC. Um, so right before GDC, that's very important. The first PSVR was showcased during GDC, but this is the problem with GDC. It's a game developers conference. It's not meant to be consumer focused, but it's very important that Sony puts this information out there of like, here's the headset, here's what it really looks like. Uh, you wanna generate you know, consumer interest, obviously, but you also wanna get the info out there so you can uh, court more developers. And keep in mind, we had a rumor, uh, not even a rumor, it was pretty, it's like an open secret that there was a developer briefing last year so whoever you know is on board to work on this thing they probably already have it and they're working on it and they've got software that's ready to go and be showcased but you still want to um you know get the consumer reveal out there first before gdc uh, to show people what this thing can really do i imagine most of the rumors that we've heard so far are largely true when it comes to you know foveated rendering wider field of view oled um you know, it's going to be pretty similar to that, I guess. It's going to be a nice uh, headset for sure, but it should support PC. It really, I think, needs to at this point. You want to give this thing some versatility and support outside of the PlayStation ecosystem. Uh, VR is awesome. I love it. Uh, but clearly it's having a harder time really penetrating the market. Um, the Quest is great because, you know, it's, it's so... It caters to more people with, you know, not being tied down by a wire. So for this, I think the best case scenario for developer support and reaching as many consumers as possible is you support this thing on PlayStation 5 and PC. 
Um, hopefully that is the case. Uh, and that goes into number four, which is VR focused acquisitions being announced. So that could be something like Camouflage, where they developed Iron Man VR, or Polyarch, which they made Moss, and they're doing Moss too. They recently had a round of funding of like $10, $10 million or something, and they're expanding to AR as well, which would be applied to mobile phones. So they might not be uh, a candidate where they want to be acquired, but actually that would work well for Sony if they, say, stepped forward and offered enough money uh, because they also want to do PlayStation Mobile stuff now, so perhaps Polyarch would be a, a great fit for Sony. Uh, but other acquisitions could also include Elphonic, uh, Ember Labs, Arrowhead Games. Uh, when it comes to acquisitions, you know, I'm not going to be in this place where it's like they should acquire developer X, Y, and Z just because they, they should, right? I, you know, there's not many people really looking at this holistically of how Sony approaches acquisitions. Um, maybe Lucid as well, we could also throw in there. I mean, we have to find partners that make sense. Uh, VR focused acquisitions, I think, would probably be the best case for how Sony should approach um, their, their VR headset where... You're not going to want first party uh, tied up doing VR stuff. They might be able to make some really incredible experiences, but it should go without saying that they need to focus on, you know, high quality 2D stuff for PlayStation 5 that's going to reach the most amount of people possible to, um, you know, really sell that hardware. So VR focused acquisitions um, would probably be what I think they'd, they'll go about doing. We know Sony has a lot of money set aside for acquisitions. Uh, the entire Sony group um, and SIE is a breadwinner for Sony. So of course they have a very large chunk of that money to use and they've been consolidating like crazy, probably gonna continue. These are some of the likely candidates that um, Sony will look into. If they did acquire a developer that's kind of seen as random, well-known for doing third-party stuff, they have their own you know, IPs in-house, which Sony doesn't seek IP, they seek talent. If they did that, that would be genuinely surprising and, and shocking to me. So I, I don't expect it. Um, Number five, game reveals four, and I'm gonna include all these. You know, if we did separate predictions, it would just eat up the entire list, but I think this year we should see reveals, not necessarily released, but reveals for, uh, but reveals for The Last of Us Factions, The Last of Us Remake, Twisted Metal, Gorilla Second Team, Firewalk Studios, and Fire Sprite. Now, that is a lot, but keep in mind we have to we have to start seeing some of these games because 2023 is going to be a peak year for the console. That's where probably the most amount of units are going to get sold. Um, that's not to say that it can't do well in 2024 either. Obviously, um, those years are important as well, but 2023 is going to be a big one. So we need reveals this year for what that software is like in 2023. Um, you know, factions, we got to see that soon. The remake, I can see that shipping 2023, but a reveal sometime this year. Uh, Twisted Metal seems like it's real. Gorilla Second Team, they're still, they're still there as far as I know. Um, we've seen really not much out of that team, or I mean, in terms of rumors or steering us in, in a direction of what they're actually doing. Um, that one seems to be a closely guarded secret. So either it's a, a project that's, um, not in development hell because it's it goes back as early as 2018 so it's been in you know it's got a decent amount of time behind it uh firewalk they just acquired firewalk and or not firewalk they acquired fire sprite which they've got they're a pretty large team as well a lot of employees uh multiple projects clearly sony saw something that they really liked and they're going to be debuting that um sometime soon probably one or both of those games uh, Firewalk, however, this is one where it's the furthest along out of the three that they announced between Haven and Deviation and Firewalk. That one is playable. It's been in development for a decent amount of time. That one is supposed to be a multiplayer focused game. So we should be seeing that um, this year. Uh, going into number six, The Last of Us Factions and Twisted Metal are either games as a service or have light elements of it where they'll have a battle royale mode, they'll be world changing, seasonal updates, etc., things like that, you know, games of, of that nature, where, I mean, basically these aren't gonna be a standard 60, 70 dollar game where they come out, they have a five, 10 minute mode or various modes where they resolve and you just play another match. Like, it seems, um, it seems like these games are probably gonna be uh, more in the direction of what most publishers are chasing nowadays, where it's an ever evolving world that keeps players highly motivated and engaged. Uh, chasing, you know, cosmetics and unlocks and all that stuff, right? I mean, these games have to be something like that. Um, they might not necessarily be free to play, but 
you know, whether you see something like factions, you know, shipping day and date on PC, which that's the only scenario where I would see that really happening. Um, but like whether factions, you know, ships on PC, Twisted Metal on PC, um, you know, these games are going to have some pretty, a uh, pretty heavy focus on really trying to sell an online world and keeping players uh, motivated to stay within that world. If that happens, I don't know, but uh, I would guess that that's probably what those games are going to be, uh, how they're going to be focused on. Uh, number seven, Bloodborne PC and PS5 finally announced and shipped within the year because, you know, this game, uh, if it happens, it's going to be a relatively straightforward uh, project where it doesn't need to be announced and, you know, it's going to take a long time to come out. It's going to be like a, you know, a Legacy of Thieves collection kind of thing. It's going to happen. It's got to, right? Um, people have been asking for it. Sony's clearly okay with doing PC releases for, you know, games in the back catalog. Uh, Demon Souls did fairly well. And also we had uh, some very recent credible rumors. You know, you had Colin Moriarty and uh, Lance McDonald, you know, pretty much putting it out there that this probably is, is true. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll, it'll make a lot of people happy. I'm sure that'll probably happen sometime this year. Uh, number eight, PC games ramp up, but PlayStation Mobile falls flat. So uh, going back to the PC stuff again, yeah, Sony's going to be exploring more of that back catalog. Uh, the rumor, or not the rumor, the prediction here is that those are actually going to be received quite well. In terms of how the ports actually are because at this point i think sony does not want to uh, have another days gone or early basically they want to start shipping very high quality pc ports that um you know they don't want to have this reputation that most other third-party publishers have where the console versions are okay but the pc one or the pc port is uh you know kind of a, a half-baked effort like the uh like integrate for example which was like came out in a terrible state but a lot of games have um, they don't want to uh, do that for their software where they, they keep it close to the chest. Um, and I still don't think day and date for single player games. I don't know why people are so pessimistic about that. Maybe they'll get there you know, in the mid to long term, but right now, probably not going to happen. Um, they'll be releasing a lot of PC stuff um, this year probably though. And the PlayStation Mobile effort, I think whatever we see is going to be you know, like lame, bogus, disappointing. I just, I don't have much faith that Sony's going to make something really compelling when it comes to this new PlayStation uh, mobile initiative. So two and two together, PC games, they come out great. Uh, the mobile stuff, boring and uninteresting. Number nine, Sony skips E3 timeframe again and sticks to state of plays in PS blog, but we will get two major live streams for this year. Um, so the E3 timeframe is in, they're not going to hold a a big live stream during the E3 time where, you know, Microsoft's clearly going to be there. Um, Nintendo may hold a direct, obviously third party publishers are going to have their own little live streams and things like that. Um, I think Sony's going to let that come and go again, right? Clearly they're not going to be a part of E3, but, um, they'll have two major live streams this year, which they're going to be outside of the, the E3 window, which would be, you know, like June. Um, but one in September, the other one, I guess we could see relatively soon. Uh, assuming that, well, technically, I guess that would include the PSVR consumer-focused reveal. So, in theory, yeah, two major reveals, or two major live streams this year. And the number 10, this is kind of a cop-out, but a surprise that no one sees coming. It's so hard, right, because uh, Sony actually surprised us a lot um, building up to PS5, the console releasing that last um, September live stream. This company's very good at keeping secrets. They are. Um, so we're going to see more of it, uh, more of that stuff this year. Um, I can't say what they're going, going to be, uh, but it's just a matter of, I think this company has a lot of, um, you know, big things that are going to not, I don't know about shock people, but definitely they're going to be showcasing some things that, uh, throw people off and go, Whoa, didn't see that coming. Um, at least one big reveal may not be a complete shock, but it, it's certainly going to surprise a lot of people. I think that should happen um, next year, and, and, it, and it probably will. Uh, now, I think we covered just about everything, and ooh, okay, <laughs> I apologize. I uh, yeah, this one's going to be long. I don't try to make them this long, but sometimes it happens. Uh, but I think we got everything done here, so uh, I'll see you next year for when we grade this video, and uh, hopefully, I'm somewhat close to what I said, because I think if everything does come true, it's going to be a pretty exciting year. Uh, but if you haven't just yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.